لله الذي احسن كل شيء خلقه وبدا خلق الانسان من طين واصلي واسلم على المبعوث رحمه للعالمين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. اليوم ان شاء الله نحتفل بعيد الاضحى المبارك فنسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يعيده علينا بالخير واليمن والبركات وان يرزق الامه الاسلاميه العزه والكرامه ان شاء الله. الاضحيه او التضحيه في الاسلام مش ليس مجرد انه الانسان يذبح خروف في العيد او كذا فاذا كانت الاضحيه او التضحيه هذا المفهوم في الاسلام معناه ذبح الخروف فقط في العيد فان اكبر تضحيه تتم في هذا اليوم هي التضحيه التي يقوم بها الخروف نفسه صح؟ لانه يضحي بنفسه حتى ان احنا نعمل عليه اكل وحاجات جميله ولكن مفهوم التضحيه في الاسلام اكبر من ذلك فالتضحيه في العبادات انك لما تصلي وتاخذ من وقتك الثمين فهذا تضحيه بالوقت ولما تتصدق وتزكي فهذا تضحيه بالاموال ولما تصوم في رمضان فهذا تضحيه بالشهوات ولما تحج فهذا تضحيه بالمال وبالوقت وبالشهوات الى اخره وكذلك التضحيه في الاسلام معناها انك تترك الحرام لرضا الله سبحانه وتعالى يعني مثلا الانسان لما يترك الخمر والخنزير وكذا فهذا تضحيه والله سبحانه وتعالى عوضه عن ذلك بغيره من الكثير من المباحات So today, inshallah, as we celebrate the Eid al-Adha, the Eid of Sacrifice, we will reflect on the meaning of sacrifice in Islam in the next two or three minutes that I have, inshallah. So sacrifice is not only about offering a goat or a sheep or qurbani for Salat al-Eid. Because if this is the meaning of uh, tadhiya or sacrifice in Islam, then the biggest sacrifice on this day is done by the goat or the sheep that we offer, the goat or the sheep that sacrificed their life so you can make biryani and you make good food. But sacrifice in Islam is not only about offering a goat or a sheep. So the meaning of sacrifice or tahiyya or tathiyya in Islam is way bigger than this. And this is something we see every day, but sometimes we forget because it happens all the time. So when you see a father and a mother going out of their way to make their kids happy, no matter how hard they suffer, this is a big sacrifice. The teachers who teach our kids it is not only for money, the salary they get at the end of the month, it is the time they put into it and the compassion and, and the reflection they put into teaching our kids to make them good Muslims. When you go out of your way to love for your brother what you love for yourself, this is not an easy thing, it's a big sacrifice. So I'm not going to focus on uh, sacrifice with other human beings, I'm going to talk briefly, inshallah, about sacrifice with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will not focus on mu'amalat, we'll talk about ibadat. So sacrifice basically in ibadat when you take time out, out of your busy schedule to make salah two rak'ah or four rak'ah for salat al this is a sacrifice of time. When for example you calculate your money at the end of the year to give your zakah or you give sadaqah, this is a sacrifice of money. When you fast in the month of Ramadan for 30 days, from Fajr to Maghrib, this is a sacrifice of desire. Because you don't eat, you don't drink, no intimate relations during this time. It's a big sacrifice of desire. When you go for Hajj, this is why Hajj is the ultimate ibadah in Islam. Because when you go for Hajj, you sacrifice everything. You sacrifice time, yes, you take your time and go. You sacrifice your money, yes, you, you pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars You book tickets, you go to the hotel. This is a big sacrifice of money. You sacrifice your desire, yes, during this time, there are certain things that you are not allowed to do. So Hajj is basically a combination of the different ibadat. It's a big sacrifice. I know some Muslims are not practicing, they don't pray, they don't fast in Ramadan, they don't care. But Alhamdulillah, a big number, I would say the majority of Muslims, they practice in a way or another. But at the end of the day, do they get exactly the same reward? The answer is no, because sometimes their sacrifice of time, money, desire is not sic uh, sic uh, is sincere and sometimes it is not in the proper way. So it's actually your attitude that makes the big difference on how you get your reward, whether you get 100%, 50% or 0%. I'll give you a few examples. <coughs> so for example, when you pray Allah, for example, or Fajr, it takes five minutes. So sometimes for you, those five minutes are very heavy. It's like a burden on your back. It's very heavy for you. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, وَإِنَّهَا وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ 
ولما تكلم عن الصلاة ويقول وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين. Allah says that salah is a burden except for those who pray with sincerity and with humility. But it's a burden, Allah says, for the majority it's a burden, but for those who pray with sincerity and they make the sacrifice, it is not a burden for them. Sometimes when you give five dollars for sadaqah for the masjid or the poor or the homeless, it's too much for you. But when you buy cigarettes with a hundred dollars, it's, it's like nothing, man. So you see now, when it comes to five dollars, it's a big of a sacrifice for you. But if you pay a hundred dollars for cigarettes or something that is uh, not beneficial to you, it is not a big deal for you. For the youth, for example, when you tell them to memorize a surah, like Surah A'la that we recited in the first rakah, for them it's a big sacrifice, they don't want to do it. Sometimes you gotta put a gun to their head to get them to memorize surah from the Quran. But listening to songs all day long and memorizing all these songs, it's easy man, it's a piece of cake, not a problem. So, for example, sometimes you see them like singing songs and the lyrics and stuff, uh, uh, Justin Bieber and all these guys, it's not a problem for them. You love me, baby. I know you care. I don't love you. It's a nightmare. Hey, right? No problem. But to get them to say, this is difficult for them. This is beneficial for you in dunya and in akhirah. But all these songs and the nonsense, it's, it's not beneficial. It's just a waste of time in this dunya and in akhirah. As I said at the beginning, sacrifice in Islam, especially in ibadah, it comes in terms of doing the halal to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like praying, fasting, so on and so forth, and avoiding the haram to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good thing about haram in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take one thing from you and He will give you thousands or millions of other things. This is why when the Quran talks about haram, it gives you the names. Because you can't you can count them on the fingers of one hand or two hands. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about halal things, He doesn't mention names because everything else is halal. Allah makes good things halal for you. This is why he leaves it open in general. So for example, if you take the example of Adam السلام, in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, look, all these trees, all these fruits are halal for you. Just one thing is haram. He didn't listen, right? So he took the only one thing that was forbidden to him. And sometimes some Muslims, when they ask, they say, subhanAllah, you see, we are suffering in this dunya. We are miserable because Adam السلام, ate from only the only one tree that was forbidden to him. But a lot of Muslims do the same thing every day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, you can sell everything except for pork, for example. Some Muslims, they choose to sell pork because if we don't sell pork, we cannot make income for our kids. So what about the other foods? If he tells you, you can sell all the drinks except for beer or alcohol, some Muslims, they choose to sell alcohol and beer thinking this is the only way they can make an income. You do it every day. So don't blame Adam السلام, for what he did because some of us, they do the same thing every day. So at the end of the day, sacrifice in Islam is not only about offering a goat or a sheep. This is just one example. Sacrifice in Islam is to sacrifice your time, your money, and your desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do it with sincerity hoping to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get the reward. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end to uh, make this Eid a blessed Eid for you and the family. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best in this life and the best in the life to come. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give izzah to Islam and Muslims, to guide our Muslim rulers to what is best for Islam and Muslims, to forgive all Muslims, those who are alive and those who are dead. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا وقطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فصلنا على القوم الكافرين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعيدكم مبارك بيرا مبارك وجزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله